will send you back to the depths of Hades. Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to another video. In this one, we are going to be taking a look at God of War 1, 2 and God of War 3 on RPCS3, this PlayStation 3 emulator. So, as you can see clearly on screen, using Vulcan and the latest master build of this emulator, we are getting absolutely perfect performance in God of War 1. To be honest, this isn't very surprising considering this game is an actual remaster, I guess you'd call it. I'm not even sure if it's a remaster, I think they just upscaled the graphics for PlayStation 3 and re-released it as God of War Collection on PlayStation 3, which contains both God of War 1 and God of War 2. So if I actually unlimited my frame rate past 60 FPS, the game would go to about 150 or 160 FPS. Um, however, if you do that, you will have massive problems with doing any of the mini games in God of War 1 and 2 due to the fact that they require precise button timing and if you have a ridiculous frame rate that is over 60, it will literally be impossible in some circumstances to actually perform those actions. Um, as you saw in that small cut sequence there, that uh, all of the videos in God of War 1 and 2, and I'm pretty sure also in God of War 3, are all pre-rendered. So it's kind of unfortunate because the cutscenes in-game look absolutely terrible. So yeah, let's just proceed below deck where previously, on the last master build, uh, I was getting really poor performance. But as you can see, when I come down here straight away, I'm still getting 60 FPS. Okay, so let's just attempt to open this health chest and proceed along this corridor and see what performance is like in the next area where we are going to be encountering a, I guess, a mini boss is what you'd call it. So yeah, you can see still perfectly locked to 60 FPS and when we enter this room, blocked a little bit too early, so I'm just going to block here because an enemy, yeah, there we go. So as you can see in this area with this boss attacking us, we're still getting a locked basically 60 FPS. You can see it does drop down to like 59.94 and 59.95, but that's literally just due to the fact that we are in software locking it to 60 FPS. So it's going to fluctuate a little bit, like maybe you can, we might even get drops of like one or two FPS, but it's that literally wouldn't happen if we had a higher FPS. It's and it's basically, it's unnoticeable in gameplay, so aside from those little uh, 1 and 2 FPS drops um, when moving between areas, we, uh, we are basically completely locked at 60. So as well as being locked at 60, I know that I'm going to get very good performance because I'm on an 8700K, but because if I unlimit this frame rate, it's giving me like 150, 160 FPS, that means that there's a lot of headroom, so people with lower performing CPUs are also going to see fairly similar performance to what I'm seeing here at a locked frame rate, if that makes sense to you. And these mini games are the ones I'm talking about, that they are literally just impossible to do if you play past 60 FPS. So um, yeah, just limit your, limit your frame rate in um, the RP3, R, RPCS3 settings. And uh, now we have to do our Prince of Persia Sands of Time little mini game puzzle thing where we have to climb across these now. When I first played these on the PS3, I was absolutely terrible, but uh, thankfully, um, my gaming skills have uh, dramatically increased over the years. So yeah, let's just um, let's just uh, try to get across these beams and I'm going to actually skip the footage on to a slightly more demanding area in the game and see what performance is like there. So here we are in the boss fight at the end of this area and as you can see we are still absolutely basically 100% locked to 60 FPS and I've tested these areas and even in these areas over the other previous areas which are less demanding we're, we would still be getting like 110, 120, 130 FPS so even with all of these effects and stuff going on it, it doesn't really affect the performance too much and even when we use our magic attacks it doesn't really do anything so yeah I would definitely say that God of War 1 on RPC S3 is fully playable and it is definitely well worth um, well worth a playthrough on this emulator because it is it is a really fun game even though some of the systems in it are uh, a bit dated but um, if you like these kind of games these kind of hack and slash games like if you like games like Devil May Cry or obviously God of War or Bayonetta or any games like that that you may have seen me cover in the past um, you'll definitely like this game. Okay, so let's move on across and check out exactly what God of War 2 is performing like. Okay, so here we are with uh, God of War 2, and you can see that even though this is a pre-rendered cutscene, we are still getting, it, it is still perfectly rendered, and uh, we are still getting 60 FPS. So, yeah, these are all pre-rendered, so you can't really use them as a basis for performance. So uh, let's actually jump into some gameplay and see what that is like. 
Okay, so here we are in gameplay in a fairly, I would say, demanding scene in the game. And as you can see in the uh, frame rate indicator, as with God of War 1, we are also uh, we are also completely locked to 60 FPS. I'm sorry if I struggle around uh, saying God of War. I just my mind as, as soon as I as I as I hear God of War, I, my mind just goes to Gears of War, and I'm struggling between uh, I'm struggling between. Uh, remembering to say god of war every time instead of saying gears of war like i uh, i keep going to so yeah you can see that in this area we are getting 60 fps and uh, i'm going to launch myself at a hand and get crushed against the wall and we are still getting 60 fps so um yeah let's uh let's jump along again into a more advanced area in this in this uh in this game in this same level and see what performance is like there also so here we are in the boss fight i guess you'd call it at the end of this uh, at the end of this uh level and um, we are just going to get the uh, Sword of Olympus. Is it called the Sword of Olympus? I can't exactly remember what the sword is called. But um, yeah, you can still see we're practically locked to 60 FPS all the time, regardless of what happens in this game. Let's just launch this guy's hand at his own head. And then we are going to be infusing all of our own blood or blood souls or whatever they are into, uh, into the Sword of Olympus. I'm just going to call it the Sword of Olympus because I can't honestly remember if that's the actual full and proper name for it so yeah as you can see in this area we are getting a full and complete 60 fps at all times in this 60 fps title on this emulator so this game is basically fully playable on rpcs3 now as well as god of war 1 so now that we've seen this game's performance let's jump straight across to god of war 3 a game that's actually native to the ps3 platform and see how that game is performing okay so for God of War 3, sorry I nearly said Gears of War 3 again, we are actually going to need to change some settings to actually get it to go in game. Um, this game requires you to turn on your CPU BLIT or Blit emulation in your debug tab and in order to do that you're going to need to enable your actual debug tab to appear on your emulator version. Now to do so you just open your emulator version folder, you want to come to your GUI configs folder then you want to open this current settings.ini file. So you want to open this in Notepad or a similar program, and then scroll down until you see this meta section right here. So under show debug tab equals needs to be set to true, it's most likely going to be set to false in your emulator version. So once you've that set to true, click save and close it, and then you can navigate back and you can open your emulator build like you can see I have right here. So God of War 3, you want to right click and come to configure, and then you want to come to this newly appeared debug tab and you want to click on that and you want to enable force CPU blit or a BLIT emulation like I previously said. Now when I come back to the GPU tab you also need to make sure to leave resolution scale at 100% or no graphics at all will correctly render and you also want to use right color buffers right color buffers sorry as you can see I have activated right here. Um, coming to my CPU tab, I am also going to be using all the settings you can see on screen right now. I'm using ASM JIT Recompiler and I'm using a preferred SPU threads of 5. Even though you can play around with the settings, just an SPU uh, thread of 5 is what works best for me. So once you've all this done, click save and we are actually now going to try launch the game itself. So let's just load through our disk based shaders and uh, actually try to get in game. So you can see in the top left hand corner I'm now rendering at around 144 FPS. It's only at 144 because that's the maximum refresh rate of my monitor so it's not going to go past that I don't believe. So yeah we're that's in no way indicative of the kind of performance we're going to be getting in game. So let's just wait through this and see exactly if this is actually going to go in game. Okay so there we go we got our little splash screen for uh, Santa Monica Studios or is it Santa Monica? Yeah, Santa Monica Studios, the guys that make Gear, Gears, no, not Gears of War, God of War. So uh, yeah, so this little intro sequence uh, fully works and it's fully rendered and looks really cool. And it's actually one of the coolest splash screens sections I've ever seen because it like completely refreshes you on uh, on the previous God of War games 1 and 2. So I'm actually going to skip it. And as you can see, when we come into the menus... Nearly everything is rendered perfectly perfectly on uh, Kratos. Kratos. I'm terrible at the pronunciation of names. My apologies. Uh, 
You can see some slight graphical errors and you can also see that the text in the menus, apart from the button prompts, the little X in the bottom left hand corner, is uh, not rendered correctly. So I'm going to come to what I'm guessing is new game and then the normal difficulty I would guess. And um, yeah, you can see that we get some, some more graphical issues right here. Now you can also notice in the top left hand corner that we are not even locked to 60 FPS in this 60 FPS game in these menus. So that's generally uh, a fairly concise indicator that performance in game itself isn't going to be very good. Now this is a pre-rendered cutscene, so it's definitely not even slightly indicative of what your performance you can see we're at 60 fps in the top left hand corner so as i was saying yeah it's not indicative at all of what performance or what graphical render quality in game is going to be like um it definitely does hype me for when this game is fully playable at like a 4k resolution on this emulator because like even just looking at this scene when this burn bird swoops up over this bridge it just i just forgot how awesome looking this game was even for its time and um, the graphics really do hold up in the actual game itself and especially so considering they have already done a remaster of this game on the playstation 4 it's like a hd remaster i'm pretty sure i don't know if they read it all the assets or if they actually read it any assets but i think all they did was just they cranked the resolution up so hopefully us guys over on the pc platform will have a similarly uh similarly visually um beautiful game once um, RPCS3 has this game fully booting. There's Thing from Fantastic Four, for any Marvel fans out there. Um, and as we come up through this cutscene, it's actually not skippable right now because this is the first time I've gone through it. Um, so we are going to have to wait through this cutscene and Kratos is going to be on the back of this Titan right here. So yeah, I'm just going to skip on through this cutscene because it's it's about another two or three minutes long and uh, I don't want you guys to, uh, as cool as the cutscene is, I don't want you guys to have to wait around just watching a cutscene when you're here to see exactly how the game is performing. So yeah, let's just skip through the cutscene and get in game. Okay, so there is a quite a stark comparison between cutscene and in-game performance. You can see we're getting like 11 FPS and we're going to be dropping down into like 5 and 6 FPS at times. You can also see that when there are no light sources that uh, the terrain is not rendered correctly at all. The only thing that's really correctly rendered are alpha effects like the fire and certain lighting effects and you can see the characters are mostly rendered correctly. You can also still see in game that none of the uh, UI text is being rendered. Now the UI for health and all of that stuff is being correctly rendered, which is kind of odd to me. But um, you can see that the text on the right hand side of the screen right now and on the left right now is not at all being correctly rendered. Um, so this is kind of the state of the game. It does get a small bit better in later sections of the game that are kind of lit by actual light sources. But due to the fact that this is kind of an open area, and uh, there's no light sources on the Titan whose back we are on right now. Uh, this is kind of, this is this area I guess is most indicative of what the game's current state of playability is. It's going in game and some stuff is rendered, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say this is uh, I wouldn't say this is playable at all. Especially when you consider that we're getting seven FPS right now on an 8700K clocked at five gigahertz, now, like an, a CPU that is just op as fuck and that the majority of people will not have access to he can see that here once again when we get into a pre-rendered cutscene we are back to 60 fps so it's kind of a little bit jarring to switch between 60 and uh 7 fps but um but yeah so that's kind of the basics of how god of war 3 god of war 2 and god of war 1 God of War 1, sorry, are uh, performing on RPCS3, this PlayStation 3 emulator. So, I'm going to end the video there. So, as always guys, cheers for checking out the video. Remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.